now start talking about plastic waste management in the country. Now, over the years, the UN has been trying to encourage many countries uh, to ban the use of single plastics. Now, the likes of Rwanda and other African countries have gone ahead to ban. I think Kenya as well has gone ahead to ban the use of single plastics. And it's gone a long way to help uh, improve the economy and, of course, the sanitation in the various countries. But in Ghana, the EPA is saying that they are not sure they can totally ban plastics in the country. The Ministry of Environment technology innovation as well says that we're not sure we can go ahead and outrightly ban the use of plastics in the country especially because it will have a dire effect on uh, you know the companies that produce these plastics but tomorrow being October 1st the president of Ghana is set to give us the way forward when it comes to the use of single plastics in the country and so today we're going to have a discussion on that let us know what you think should they go ahead and ban it or not in the studios I have Daniel Tonyega he's a director for policy and sustainability federation of plastic uh, management uh, manufacturers okay and recyclers uh, association in Ghana good to have you how are you doing very fine brother. yeah we're having a discussion on the other topic but we'll leave that <laughs> for another day and talk about the situation Obviously. as it stands now yeah. first of all what do you make of people asking for the total ban of the use of plastics in all the right. country thank you so much and uh, good morning to your viewers good morning uh, it's a it's a pleasure coming back to this beautiful studios again. You're welcome. All right, so back to the question. Hmm. Well, single-use plastics yeah. are, are there. Mm -hmm. And indeed, uh, with, a, with a current issue, as we all uh, see, the reality is that plastic waste is a, is a challenge. It is a challenge. Nobody's running away from it. Mm. Even those of us who are advocates for plastics, we didn't say there isn't any challenge okay. there. And then these challenges can be surmountable. Okay. We believe that with the right, uh, you know, frame of policies, mm -hmm. it can be, be, be reduced to the barest minimum. Okay. Now, back to the, the, the issue of single-use plastics and its effect on, mm -hmm. our, uh, on our everyday lives. Now, single-use plastic has its own way of having uh, uh, that waste management challenge mm -hmm. because one way or the other, when it comes to its recyclability, it's a problem. Yeah. Why? Because, you know, plastic uh, uh, recycling or manufacturing mm. takes a lot of energy. Yeah. Now, with single-use plastic, they are micro are very small. Mm. So when you put it back to recycling system, it consumes much energy with less uh, effort and with less uh, productivity. Okay. So in that effect, most of the manufacturers and recyclers do not want to recycle uh, uh, single-use plastic because of its lighter in terms oh. of its micro Okay. Now, with respect to uh, poly polyesterines and those... You know, in our normal parlance, we call it the takeaway packs, yeah, yeah. The, the spoons and what have you. It is always disposable immediately we use. Mm -hmm. And in a country like Ghana, where waste management structures are not in place, mm -hmm. it becomes so difficult that people within the value chain of waste management will see what we use these for. Yeah. Hence, the disposal system is high and indeed plastic is lighter. So when the air blows, some of these things are blown onto the open environment mm -hmm. and then we see it die effect. Yeah. So with, with the president's agenda of finding a means of uh, banning single-use plastic, yeah. for me, I, I, I always advocate against ban because oh, I, 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 I always say that banning generally is a, is a, is a lazy man's approach. Rather... But yeah, no, I'm coming. Okay. Please, uh, my point will be very yeah. clear. I'm not talking about single-use plastics. I'm of talking course. about generally General. plastics mm -hmm. because from 2006 down to today, every government in Ghana would, you know, they don't look at what can we do to get the best out of these materials. We don't mm. call it a waste. Okay. We call it materials in transition. Okay. They've moved from one transition to the, to other. the other. So you and I have finished using our uh, PET bottles it doesn't end at its full cycle. Okay. It can go back to the recycling system, crash into flakes, get it back onto it, and we can use it for, for fiber. Even the seats we are sitting, we are seated on, it can be used for. But this is a country where we are struggling with recycling mm -hmm. and waste separation. Thank you. And you are saying that it's, you know, a, a product in transition. Yes. If we're having issues with recycling, how then are you saying that we shouldn't ban it? Because it? clearly, mm -hmm. the companies that should help with recycling, government should help with recycling, that's not really happening. Thank you. That's the tail end yeah. you, you want to. You know, we are struggling with recycling because yeah. policies are not working. Okay. Now, sorry to say, but the reality is that after this law was promulgated in 2013, yeah. where we, we need to have the plastic waste recycling fund, yeah. the monies have been collected and, and they are collecting even as we speak today. Yeah. 
when you we, when you import the uh, what do you call it the preforms that is the semi raw materials and mm. the raw materials from outside Ghana because Ghana we are not a petrochemical not. country yeah. when you import there is a ten percent ad valorem tax that is being charged mm -hmm. and those monies we understand it's in the consolidated fund now with the law the law tells us that let's use it for recycling purposes yeah which has not happened. which has not been done yeah. so the challenge has not got to do with the industry. It is a challenge from government. Okay. So, with the with the with the this in new initiative of partnership, where mm -hmm. the president is going to sign it tomorrow, yeah, I'm privileged to be part of it. Okay. Yes, and I'm happy because this time around the accountability will be on a on a dichotomy okay. from government and industry. All right. Government will have its part to play. Mm. Government will make sure that the enabling environment for policy regulation work mm -hmm. will be done because epa as you mentioned yeah are doing their best yeah epa initiated the source separation of waste some time back they started within the ministry's enclave mm -hmm. and as we speak today at least the psyche of all those working within the ministries know that when i finish eating yeah or when i, when I finish working on something i know where to dispose, to dispose of, of the, yeah. pl the paper will go to paper the plastic will go to plastics if we had replicated that to households do you know what we would have done mm. Now, we are, we're going to create more employment. Yeah. The revenue generation to government will not be as we have now. It will increase because the buyback centers will have work to do. Mm. Those who are, have already separated their waste from household will bring it there and take money. Mm. Now, there is an initiative where we had the privilege in South Africa and the Netherlands. We learned that in every municipality have adopted this system where if you are a household and you don't separate your, your waste, waste yeah. you'll be charged. Okay. Now, when you separate it, as we have today, every uh, waste management company or these tricycles come to the various household and they take money out of your waste. But on the other way, we will turn the table like this and they are either giving you money or they are taking it free of charge. So you have your waste. It mm -hmm. is not paid for. Somebody comes to pick it and send it mm -hmm. to the requisite recycling enclave because it has been separated who have the value out of it and my call for it being a material in transition comes to into force okay and we will not change the narrative because it is still material in transition so so if i'm getting right are you saying that people would start getting paid for separating their waste you separate it you have up? the benefits okay because when you don't uh, you know put together your organic waste and out of the plastic and because for every plastic i say everywhere there is a value in plastic. In plastic, okay. Because it has a full cycle, it must go. Now, with this partnership, I believe that government is going to accept to bring a policy called the circular economy policy. Okay. Now, the circular economy policy is very clear. Mm. It starts from product design, manufacturing, use, and post-use. Now, the post-use has a three ways it goes. Number one, it goes as a material. Number two, it goes as a reuse material. So we have so many things we can use plastics for. Yeah. So plastic should not be a burden for Ghanaians. But it is a burden. I mean, when we talk about flooding issues in Ghana, majority of what causes floods is the fact that we have plastic waste choking our gutters and our waterways. Now, you're saying that people should separate their waste. When they're picking it up, they'll get paid. What about the person on the street? You know, I mean, how are they also going to manage uh, to learn to separate the waste? Because that's what's choking our gutters. Okay, so 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 I'm saying that mm -hmm. when it has been adopted within the municipal enclaves, yeah. what happens is that they will take care of those, of uh, the, the streets. Okay. They will give us more than one bin. Yeah. So beans so are there. Which ones. Now, what we see today yeah. is only one one bin. It is everywhere. So everything goes. So into you one bin. you have a paper waste. You open, you put it in. Yeah. I have a plastic waste. I, I put it in. in. But you see, the understanding of the public is also very key. Exactly. Now, what what do I want the public to understand? Mm -hmm. I want the public to understand that the plastic we see on the screens right now yeah. are not waste. Okay. Now the paper that is even part of it mm. are also not waste because. Sorry to say, our tissue papers, our toilet rolls yeah. are made from, from these. Paper, yeah. Now, yeah. for everything that we want to see Ghana, the, the, the economy, having that better impact out of plastics, one thing is for sure, that government will understand that, one, if we try to hit hard in terms of sensitization, mm. letting the, the public know that, hey, for every plastic use, for every sachet water I buy on the street, I need not to throw it away. Mm -hmm. I can take it back and put it in my separate... I should carry the sachet water home. 
you know how Ghanaians are. <laughs> when it comes to some of these issues, yes, it but, becomes but, a very difficult thing to implement. It, it is difficult. It is an issue of change. Mm. Now, with respect to what you mentioned earlier, that uh, gardens are chokes and flood and what have you, there are no empirical... It's, it's all about what we see. This is the reality. We don't need empirical evidence to know <laughs> what is causing the floods. I mean, of course, we know that um, apart from building on waterways and, you know, yes. not having the right... So yes, that, but that's then... Is, that is about 85% 80, of the real issue. Are you sure? I'm very sure. You know why? Because plastics, as you made mention, are, are blown into the gutters. They make up 40% of the waste we see in, a, it doesn't. in the sea. It doesn't. No, in the ocean. In the ocean. Is yeah. it, the issue about ocean, let me bring what the research down, that, that's the Ellen MacArthur Foundation mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. What happened was that, you know, because the open environment is not able to accommodate the waste, mm -hmm. it goes into the ocean environment. And that's having now, a, an effect on all It's having an effect. And, and I, in fact, I've been doing, I've been consulting for some industry, including Ministry of Fisheries. I told them that by 2050, as the report says, mm -hmm. If we don't take care and manage it today, mm -hmm. by 2050, the fish stock in the sea will, will be lower will and the pl yeah. plastic will add mm -hmm. And Indeed, it's not plastic. It's the waste. Mm -hmm. there's, there's the waste component in the sea. Majority of it being plastic. Plastics. Yeah. Because it is lighter, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. It is blown. So within the, the, our ecosystem, we are not able to accommodate that material in transition. So we allow it. It falls into gutters. But you see, the transition between the gutter and the sea is very minimal because mm -hmm. when it rains, because it is lighter, it will come on top. Mm -hmm. That is why I, I personally do not believe that the flooding are caused by plastics. I believe that our, our gutters are choked because we are not desilting well. And indeed, when we even with desilt, but what we, is we, causing... leave it, we leave it at the side oh, of, the, of the gutter. But when they take it out, what do you see? You see when they desilt gutters sand, and they leave you, the, sand, the components yes. you see, I can mention them. Uh -huh. You see sand. You see some components of wood mm -hmm. and you see plastics. Okay. Now, the plastic cannot form the majority. L let's make it very clear. All right. You see, we can, we can, we can, we can mm -hmm. say plastic is the bad uh, material mm. and we'll hang it. Give a, a dog a bad, a name, bad name and then hang it. Yeah. But in reality, that isn't the truth. Okay. We, 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 we fail to manage our waste well. Mm. So that's why I'm saying that from tomorrow, I want to see the commitment from the government. Okay. You see, my expectations are very simple. Mm -hmm. Government will do its part. And okay. that is what I'm believing. I trust that when the president himself is part of the process, all those within the, 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 the policy chain will also okay. do their work. So the president is supposed to speak in favor of, um, you know, the fact that we should learn to separate our waste, one. And also the fact that um, uh, you, you think that apart from separating the waste, we should also pass the levy fund? Of course. Okay. Now... In foreign countries, they have banned the use of single plastics, like rubber bags and stuff. When you're going to shop, you have to carry your own bag. Sometimes they sell it in the shops. That's it. So you buy it, and it's reusable. It's a tote bag. D so you, know? you go back home, and you still have it. So there's no point in littering you know, your home or the compound with plastic bags. Absolutely. And that has gone a long way to reduce... Um, the the you waste know. system exactly. over there. Yes. So what, why can't we do that in Ghana? Mm -hmm. Now, I agree with the single-use plastics. We can take them away. Okay, you are for I am, I am for it. But you okay. see, but when you are doing the classification, mm -hmm. don't add carrier bags. Okay. Because with carrier bags, when you increase the micronage, it becomes reusable many times. But they are throwing it on the... Uh -huh. on the so, let the policy come and say, with every carrier bag, let's increase the micronage of a carrier bag. From the current, let's say, 0 0.14 mm -hmm. to, let's say, 1.1, .1, or let's say... Uh, in, in all intents and purposes, let's make it 15. It doesn't change the fact that it's still going to litter. No. You see, littering is an attitudinal issue. Which we have to address. We have to address the attitudinal issue cool. first. When we do, everybody knows that, okay, I've been enlightened. I need not to throw my, my rubbish away. If you my... have a tote bag, you won't throw it away. <laughs> okay. Am I lying? No, yes. But yeah. you, you, need to be, you need to be enlightened. Mm. You see, the enlightenment brings the light with which we are all looking for. Mm -hmm. Because even the Bible says that the world is full of darkness. We, our minds are darkened. So we need the light of a word. And we understand, oh, the perspective will change because I know that my waste is so valuable. You are speaking in favor of companies that produce these plastics. Because clearly, we totally understand that if it's banned then these companies are going to run at a loss. Oh, and indeed, the, the economy will also have an effect because the plastic value chain itself, mm -hmm. the plastic producers are more than over 350,000 
working force. Okay. That is a direct employment. And every plastic manufacturer, when you employ one person, we are looking at four additional, you know, indirect jobs it is creating. Mm. So one three hundred and fifty thousand multiplied by four, you know the number of people who who as as it were their work schedules will be curtailed. Okay. But you see, the challenge had not had not got into the economy or any other thing. Yeah. Our focus is the environment. The environment, the ecosystem you and I live in mm. must have its sanity. I believe that. I agree. That is why in my opening statement I said the reality is that plastic waste is becoming a problem. Yeah. But you see, we need to tackle it from all fronts. We need not to start demonizing the material yeah. and you say we want to take them away. Indeed, with Rwanda and Kenya, as yeah. you made mention in your yeah. intro, yes, officially it is banned. Mm -hmm. But go there and see. I was there a couple of years and ago. What did you see? I saw plastic in the system. People are smuggling it from, from unauthorized routes and they are bringing it in the system. People are using it. In fact, you need to create an alternative. As a country, if, if government want to, even indeed with the single-use plastics, uh -huh. we have the polystyrenes and all these uh, plastic forks, plastic spoons, yeah. and what have you. Mm. These are our daily lives. People who are doing their businesses, add them to, to, to bring some kind of brand to what they are selling. Yeah. Now, if we, today, we ban it, what alternatives has government created? Mm -hmm. We need to have... Carry your own bowls and cups and mugs. <laughs> In India, they are pushing for that because that's one of India's biggest problems. And now they are saying that's okay. Now you need to carry your own mugs and your own bottles. And we, we all have them when we are going to work. Don't we put our tea yeah. and our water and all those plastics? Yeah. If we have that and we're going to buy food and I say, I, Madam, I have my bowl. Put it inside. That's, so that that's I won't, perfect. That's perfect. So that I won't have to buy plastic and dump it somewhere. That's perfect. So, so I agree to some large extent that single-use plastics are a problem. Mm. But I'm calling for an alternative. Let's ban them. Of course. Yeah, but, but you see, when you ban them, the reality is that how many people will be going to the watch seller to say, Madam watch seller, I came with my bow. If everybody so, is doing it, if you don't so, have a so choice, you, 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 st you start that you not change. If it, yeah. You start the, you start the campaigning mm. uh, that okay, everybody must go with this. So we stop with the lower micro lower niche. Mi yeah, we stop with the local, lower yeah. micro niche. But with respect to the uh, carrier bags, mm. the policy must call for an increment in micro niche okay. so that we can reuse it because that one has a huge impact in terms of in the industry all right yes let me ask this as well so these plastic manufacturing companies why don't they have their own recycling plants because i remember i interviewed um a very popular one um uh, what they do is what they do is they collect pure water wrappers and stuff and now they are making it into pavement blocks okay so they have their own recycling on the side after you're done using it they'll come back for it and make it into pavement blocks must you wait for government to be the one or you are waiting for the president to now come and be the one to say that okay we are passing this uh, levy or this recycling whatever before we act on it okay what about the companies themselves right. shouldn't they be proactive enough to now try and have their own recycling it's an association you can even come together and decide to work towards it all right bella thank you now first and foremost in fact, about 99% of plastic manufacturing companies in Ghana mm. have their own in-house recycling they plants. They do? They do. Okay. All of them do. And how effective are they? It is very effective. The challenge is that when the waste goes into the open environment, plastic, the, you know, picking it itself is a problem. Why? Because sometimes there are contaminants around it. Mm -hmm. So when you pick it and it is no good, the, the recyclers do not accept it. Now, that is why when we, you see, that's what I'm saying that for all this we are talking about, it starts from a source. Okay. The source is that we need to call for an attitudinal change. We so need you to are let still bet yes. on that. It is not change. about the industry. Okay. The industry are doing every all their bet. In fact, I have personally worked as a as a plastic manu manufacturer, you okay. know, within the manufacturing space before. Mm. Now, this company you are mentioning, uh, that is Neoplast. Yeah. They they yeah. they were it's doing Neoplast, yes, they were yes. doing their own carrier bags, mm -hmm. but they realized that okay. Now, let's go into full recycling. Yeah. What the law is calling for is a support from government. Okay. Because it got to a time, the, the industry realized that every time the, the narratives from government is that plastic is polluting our environment, mm. let's ban it. Mm. Then the uh, industry said, no, why don't we support you to help us to build whichever institutions we need to build okay. so that we can absorb it. Now, in-house recycling can do, but it cannot do as... Can you imagine if government policy for one district, one factory mm -hmm. had included 
uh, recycling. Let's do one recycling, one region. Included? It's not included. In the Me, one personally, I've even written a proposal to the, the that secretariat. I was not even mind. I think they've thrown my documents away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, we can go on and on and talk about this. But, of course, he's advocating for attitude now change, first of all. Uh, then, and then so... The circular economy. And, okay. Everything unwrapped. And then okay. we'll get there. Let's in the next five years, in the next five years, you will not see the plastic you see. If, indeed, government is getting committed to what they're going to sign tomorrow, Circular economy, mm. recycling, attitudinal change. We end the story. I know a lot of people sell their pure water sachet, um, you know, wrappers. My mom even does it. She always see? puts it together, the you bottles see? and everything. And that someone picks up and she gets paid for it. It might not you be see? a lot, but at least it's the way forward. Started it from here. It's the way forward. And so maybe a lot of us need to adopt that as well. But the president will be speaking on the policy, um, you know, moving forward tomorrow. And so we all can't wait to hear what he has to say. But I've been speaking to Daniel Tonyega. He's a director of policy and sustainability. Federation of Plastic Manufacturers, Users, Recyclers, and, um, uh, oh, okay, in Ghana. Okay, all right. So thank you so much. Thank you, Bella. And we can't wait to hear what he has to say tomorrow. Maybe it Absolutely. should be in line with yes, 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 what yes. you have asked for. Of course. All right, this is still New Day.